What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about permutation importance and how to use it in Python and in scikit-learn in order to determine how important features are for specific classifiers. So let's get right into it. All right, now some machine learning models provide you with feature importances out of the box. For example, random forest classifiers, you just have to train them on the data and then you can look at the feature importances to determine which features are important and relevant for the decision making process. Now other models don't have this functionality, don't have this metric that you can look at. And in this video today, we're going to learn how we can still get a metric and a number for the individual feature importances using something called permutation importance in scikit-learn. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the command line in order to install scikit-learn if you don't have it on your system yet. We're going to do pip or pip3 install scikit-learn. And then we're going to import a data set, the breast cancer data set, which I like to use oftentimes in these explainability videos. And then we're going to train a simple model, a simple random forest to show you how you can get the feature importance easily. And then we're going to train something else, a naive base, so a Gaussian naive base uh, classifier. And there you can see we don't have a feature importance. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say from sklearn.datasets import load breast cancer from sklearn dot ensemble, we're going to import a random forest classifier from sklearn dot naive base, we're going to import Gaussian naive base, and then from sklearn dot model selection, we're going to import a train test split. Then we're going to say that the data is equal to load breast cancer. And then we're going to say x and y are going to be equal to data data and data targets like this. And then we can see we have X, we have Y. So those are the features. And here we have the classification. I always forget what the order is. So we can go to target names. And zero means malignant, one means benign. So that's the basic structure of the data set we're working with. And <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to train a random force classifier just to see that we can look at the feature importances immediately. So I can say classifier equals random forest classifier. Let's use all the CPU cores that are available. CLF fit. And actually, I should do a train test split first. So x train x test, y train y test is going to be equal to train test split of x and y with a test size of 20%. And of course, we fit on X train and Y train. There you go. And then I can score it on the test data to see how well it performs. In this case, 95% accuracy. And then all I have to do in order to get the feature importances in the case of a random forest classifier is to say CLF dot feature importances. And then I can of course zip this together. Um, so I can I can do something like uh, importances is equal to dict and then to zip data feature names. And um, these importances here, and then I can say, actually, what did I do here? Oh, I didn't close the square bracket. So we have this we zip this together, we make it a dictionary, and then we can also sort the dictionary. So we can say, k and v uh, key and value basically for kv in sorted importances dot items. And the key for sorting is lambda item or let's just call it x, x one. So the importance itself and reverse true because we want to have it in descending order. And then I can print the importances and you can see these are now the feature importances for a random forest classifier. This is functionality that's already built in. Now let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing now with a naive base classifier. So let's say we have here NBCLF is going to be equal to a Gaussian NB. I'm going to do NBCLF.fit on X train and on Y train. Then I can evaluate it score it on the testing data. And I get also a good performance 93% accuracy. Um, 
And now in this case, if I go nbclf dot, I don't have any feature importances here. I don't have anything that I can look at that indicates how important the individual features are. So what I can do now is I can use from scikit-learn inspection, something called permutation importance. And to break it down very simply, what we do is we uh, take a feature, we take one column of the features. So one of these features here, and we completely shuffle it while leaving all of the rest the same. And what we do is we evaluate the model once we evaluate um, the performance on the test data with the original test data. And then we do the same thing with one of these columns completely shuffled, completely randomized. And we do that individually for each of these columns for each of these features. And we see how much worse the model performs when the column is completely messed up, indicating of course, if I mess up a very important column, it's, um, it's going to reduce the score, it's going to basically make the predictions worse, because this uh, column is very important, or very significant. So what we can do now here is we can say from scikit learn dot inspection import permutation importance. And all we have to do now is we have to say importances is equal to permutation importance, nbclf, x test, y test, we want to do this on the test data, not on the data that we used for training. Uh, and we can also repeat this a couple of times to get more representative results. So let's repeat this 30 times. And what I get as a result here is a couple of importances. And I'm particularly interested in the mean importances, this is actually uh, what I care about. So I can go ahead and I can copy this here. Hopefully I can copy this with the Vim bindings. And there you go. And the only thing that we change now here is we're going to change this to NB. Or actually, we're not going to change this to NB at all. We're going to change this to uh, importances dot importances me. And I think the rest stays the same. There you go. So now you can see that this is based on the naive base classifier, we're not using the random forest classifier here we can see that we have feature importances for our naive base classifier, and we can compare them now, at least uh, a little bit with the random forest classifier, we can see that here, the most important one was the perimeter and the area. And down here, we have also the area very high and the perimeter is also not too low. So we get some feature importances that seem to be to seem that seem to kind of align with the feature importances of a random forest classifier. Now, of course, what we can also do is we can apply this to the classifier to the random forest classifier itself, and see how similar the results are. So I can go ahead and I can run this. Now, in this case, let me just stop this, we should probably pass n jobs being equal to negative one, because we can then utilize all the CPU cores because it uh, takes some time to do that for the forest. And when we have that, we can see that we have some positive and some negative feature importances. So maybe it makes sense actually to do this with the absolute values here. Um, now, let's do it like this importances. And now you can see that uh, it's not focusing on the sign. So negative or positive. Uh, these are still the most important features. And you can see we have the worst perimeter here, we have the worst area quite up, quite high up here. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's a good thing that you can use if you need feature importances to analyze uh, or to explain your model to some degree. And you don't have it inherently in the model, you're using something like a naive base, you're using something like a support vector classifier, and you want to explain or you want to see which features influence the decision making the most. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.